Welcome back everyone to Cheddar Movers. Our next guest thinks that economic inequality can be eradicated by the everyday person by having them adopt investing strategies employed by the ultra-rich. Jeremiah Brown has written a new book. It's called Stack, an introduction to the highest levels of investing out Monday. And he joins us now with his stack. Jeremiah, great to have you with us here on the show. So great, where, where are the ultra-rich investing and how are they doing it? Um, so uh, I think more so than where they're investing is more about the mindset. Um, I point back to uh, my book, Stack, and I actually talk about the new rules of money as it applies. And one of the rules is understanding the language of money, right? Um, so we're in the stock market today. A common language we'll hear is PE, right? However, if you're in real estate, PE transfers to cap rate. And when you're in um, you own a business or anything like that, if you're trying to sell it, another common term will be multiple. So not understanding this language of money is the equivalent to actually being um, in Russia and trying to speak uh, China, uh, Chinese in a sense. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's going to be pretty hard to navigate uh, in that route, and the same applies with business. What the everyday person might be asking themselves is, you know, how do I get the mm -hmm. type of capital to even start investing, mm -hmm. like the ultra-rich, as you're mentioning, because we're trying to set aside um, smaller amounts of money Absolutely. to take smaller stakes, whereas the ultra-rich, they've got, you know, hordes of money that they're able to pour into the market. Right, right. And um, obviously the goal is uh, if you don't have access to capital is not to, um, you know, pretty much figure out a way to invest. It's more about the mindset, right? So you can apply the same principles and philosophies that the wealthy do without their uh, allocation to the enormous amount of capital. Um, what I recommend is you, you focus on asset uh, diversification rather than sectoral diversification. Um, that's pretty much uh, allocating some resources towards gold, um, equities, and also real estate if you want. There's all, you can also invest in uh, you know, equity real estate like REITs. Mm -hmm. um, and these are actually tools that you can utilize for income and also capital preservation. And that's what the wealthy actually do. Yeah, I know your book is about helping the everyday person get that kind yes. of money. But what about, let's say, from... The yeah, you know, political perspective. Uh, yeah. You know, Bernie Sanders, Senator Warren, yeah, both of yeah. them want to tax the ultra rich. Absolutely. Do you think that's a way forward? Um, you know what? It's 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 a way to to start the conversation, right? Um, I think what Senator Warren has done with the wealth tax is pretty much offer a solution for combating the um, exorbitant amount of wealth disparity that's happening in America currently. Um, however, what I would recommend uh, personally would be an innovation fund, right? Instead of ta using the word taxation, that's normally a taboo, right, when it comes to wealth and, build and wealth building, we can utilize the term innovation fund that can be allocated towards, you know, initially um, innovation blind spots, mm -hmm. right, I, I would per se. So I think shifting the conversation from, you know, taking from the wealthy instead of, uh, well, actually to um, offer a more of a solution on how to create a win-win will definitely help for sure. You got $100 on the book cover. The book itself, yes. also $100. Absolutely. It's a lofty price tag. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the goal, obviously, for the, the $100 price tag, uh, we actually partnered with United Way, is to um, help eradicate, obviously, poverty um, in low-income communities. So 50% of the funds will actually go towards that. And um, for me, it's not really a financial um, uh, motivation. It's more about a motivation to help empower the ordinary person and invest like the wealthy. Got it. And that mindset, of course, uh, is really, really important. So, Absolutely. So what, what happens also when you do make it? You know, I mean, I'm always curious, yeah, like yeah. when, you know, you, you know, you start at a level and then you get and then and then what happens? Do you think people change? Um, yeah. And I think it goes back to the mindset. Right. I think um, the more money you make, the more we as humans um, tend to adapt right to the money that we're earning. Um, I think it's more about a way of keeping score after a certain amount. And, I th and what we should more, what we should focus on moving forward is how we can serve our communities, as well as build our wealth. It can actually help create a win-win, and that's why I implement the idea of an innovation fund because what it does is it allows the wealthy to take part in the growth of the people who are less fortunate or who don't normally have access to capital, and um, it allows them to grow as well. So I think it's definitely a win-win for society. Just very quickly as well, in terms of the biggest takeaway that you hope somebody gets from the book, what is that? Um, you know what, the biggest takeaway is to understand the language of money, number one. Number two, understanding that um, the owning capital is the gateway to wealth, right? Um, and 70% of capital that's earned from the 1% is allocated towards owning capital. Whereas if you look at the bottom 99%, it's the total opposite. 70% is built on labor right, to get access to capital. So 
um, just shifting your mindset, understanding that money is power, capital is power, and how to leverage that to make more of itself is a way for us to all understand how money works. Jeremiah Brown, always a pleasure to have you here with us on set. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks for having me. He's the author of Stack, an introduction to the highest levels of investing. That is out on Monday.